I am speaking with Fritz Nelson with Information Week. And also David Berlin with UBM Tech Media. Awesome. And you guys gave a great presentation about, well, the coming walled gardens are kind of half here and we're going to have to make a choice. Explain what, what we're dealing with right now. Well, I mean, I think one of the things that, that we see is that all of these companies are making moves. Announcement, the latest being that Apple has kicked Google Maps out of the iTunes store. And why would they do that? Not just because they have their own maps, but because they were giving Google the platform to create all of the, or to collect all of the information about geography of all of their users. So they were kind of giving, they were helping Google's business. And so what does that mean? And, and I think David and I were thinking, we, we had these conversations constantly. Why did Microsoft buy Skype? Why did this company launch this? Why did this company invent that? And there's a, an end game here, which is they want you to be in their walled garden. Apple does, Google does, Microsoft does, and they want to control your information. They want to provide services back to you, but they want you to do it all in their little environment. Yeah, I think the key is is that there's a little bit of a quid pro, uh, quid pro quo here, which is is that you're going to get some really good personalized services. What we think of Google Now as being sort of a harbinger of things to come. So the idea that Google Now is trying to anticipate your next move, give you some information about that next move. Uh, there's a, a, a you know a future to that. There's a scenario, for example, where they figure out how much tread is left on your shoe and that the replacement for those shoes is available 20 yards away and if you conduct the transaction right now on your mobile device, you can walk into the store and the clerk will hand you your bag and you'll walk out. In order to get all that information, which is good, it's useful, it's something that all of us would really like to have that kind of convenience in our lives, you're going to have to give up a lot of information, but you're going to have to give it to pretty much one provider because the only way that that one provider is going to be able to take all that information and suss out what the next thing is that you're going to do and then provide you with some services connected with it is, is if it's coming from it's all wrapped up into one provider service so Fritz and I kind of like to uh, look at how that trend is shaping up what were the events that let that have led up to this point where we are right now and what could possibly happen in the future to kind of seal the deal so that Apple ends up being a massive collector of signal from a lot of different services whether it's maps or search or whatever it may be same thing for Google same thing for Amazon and Microsoft and one of the things we found was that what Microsoft is a company that you can't count out yet yeah and not 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 just because it has phones and tablets and a Windows Phone 8 and Windows 8, but because they own the enterprise. That's right. So uh, you put down a whole list of sort of the hooks that they're all kind of building in to sort of rope us into their walled garden. Is there any one hooks that are stronger than others? And is there, I guess, a hook that's not fully developed yet, which will be the ultimate hook? We also had uh, a tag cloud that showed, based on the size of the font, the strength of the signal. So search is a really strong signal. It tells the search provider a lot about the people who are using the search engine service, what it is they're looking for, what they're trying to buy, where they're going. Another big signal that Fritz likes to talk about is commerce, and I'll let him talk about why that's so important. Yeah, and I think you know we've seen Google with Wallet and, and Apple with their Passbook service, and Microsoft with their Wallet initiative really dive into this notion of commerce. If you think about it, you know, being in the middle of the transaction, if you're a wallet provider or you're in the payment space, means you're collecting buying information. You have the power to know what people are spending their money on. And that, I don't know if that's a big signal, but it sure is a lucrative signal. And I think that's going to emerge as one of, one of the biggest ones. And you know, I, I think we still have a ways to go. If you ask, you ask about the future, I think that's the one we're going to see a lot of activity on. Just today, Bank of America announced that they were coming after Square with their own service for merchants. You see Amazon in here, you see PayPal in here, you see startups, you see big banks getting into this space. Everybody wants to own that piece of things. They want to own the transaction. In fact, I think the reason the bank gets in, in, in there is because they see Square suddenly becoming another layer of intermediary in the whole transaction and the banks would rather own it the way they do now. I mean, essentially, every transaction that anybody makes anywhere eventually is backed up by a bank. Now we could ask the question, what is a bank? Because that's sort of changing, but that's a different conversation. Guys, thank you so much for your time. You're awesome as always. Thank you. Thank you.